Welcome back to Tales from the Power Rage. Hope you're well. Hi guys, how are you doing? Hello everyone. Hey, all good. How are you doing? Cool. Tonight we're going to be talking about a recent visit to Hard Rock Hell in Great Yarmouth. And for those of you who've never been there, uh, it rocks. Uh, just look at Bon Scott on the internet and he'll tell you all about it. But we <laughs> went to go and uh, review a set from Burnt Out Rec, uh, which was absolutely fantastic. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, we talk about a few other bands that we saw on the day, including Ingwe Malmsteen, Quiver, Midnight Devils, and the Hot One too, as well. So really, really looking forward to that. If you were at Hard Rock Hell, or even if you weren't, if you're interested in any of these bands, please uh, get involved in the comments, ring the house bell, like, get involved, and please give us a sub if you haven't already. We really, really appreciate that if you could. So... Um, we headed up, we went to the on the Saturday, um, and this is the, our third visit to Hard Rock Hell, second one in Great Yarmouth, went to Wales a few years back, uh, which was amazing. Um, but let's kick off with, uh, well, let's talk about Burnout Wreck, first of all, a, a band that we've got into this year, one of our favourite bands of the moment, a uh, real sort of uh, a classic hard rock band. So um, I'm going to come to you first, Gappy. Do you, any... Any thoughts on the gig and uh, and the set that we that we witnessed that night? Well, we were really looking forward to seeing them, weren't we? Because we'd, uh, as you say, we'd just got recently into them, and uh, we'd already done a piece with Gary, uh, which is on a previous pod that we've done. So we were really looking forward to go and see these live because uh, the sort of ACDC esque sound that they've got is really right up all our streets, I think, and uh, they absolutely pulled it off perfectly on the night. They were they were really really good. And they had a big crowd. Jam, you, I, I know you were um, really impressed with the crowd that was there when the when the set finished. Any any thoughts on the on the set? Yeah, well, <clears throat> when, when we did the interview with Gary previously, one of the I think it was Gappy asked him about uh, was he tempted to do all the play all the instruments himself when he recorded the record, and he went, "Well, no, because you know, don't know what the guys were, the rest of the guys in the band." When mm. you actually see them live, what you're getting is five superb mus musicians. You're actually getting yeah. five guys that really know their they really know what they're doing. Um, they're absolutely brilliant. And that's the thing that blew me away the most. The personality that shone through from all of them um was excellent. And as as you're saying there, sort of halfway through I looked back, looked behind me, and it was packed. Their 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 initial couple of songs that they played was like a siren yeah. going out across great. It took Yard. a little while to fill out, didn't it? But it filled out yeah. perfectly. It was brilliant. People obviously heard it, and then I looked back, as I say, because we were front and centre, we'll be front row. I look back and it's packed and everyone was nodding their heads. Everyone was so into them, but they they were really, really good. The personalities really shone through in their playing. And it, and for me, again, it wasn't just one. Both the guitarists were just, were just superb and both of their own, their own style is really, really good. Brilliant. And any any particular songs that stood out for you? I, I thought it was a really, a really balanced set. I thought it was really, really good. It's cracking opening with Dead or Alive. Uh, love that track and it really put it I it's it sent out a, a, a good a good opening vibe I thought yeah the first two songs and fights great pretty killer yeah. yeah I was I was really happy that they played guitars electrified at the end instead of rock ain't dead as well because they only had a time for one more song so they dropped the heavy petting song and played guitars electrified which was absolutely immense brilliant and Gav I think uh I think Gary had a vintage guitar on the night as well yeah I didn't realize this was a kind of a a rare thing to see but he, he was trying out his 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 new endorsement guitar um and i think it might have been one of the first times that all three of them have played guitar together on stage and man it sounded good it was a real it was something i would i would suggest they do a little bit more of i guess on on some of the songs because it it really gave it a massive beefy sound it was brilliant yeah and, uh, and it suits him as well yeah <laughs> the good looking guitar yeah and, and Gappy, I know you love a bass player. We can't really see L on that because the uh, the headstock's in it. Yeah, Alex, Alex but he was amazing, cool, right? Yeah, he yeah I really... thought he was great. He reminded me. I said this on the night, but he looked uh, he looked like Tommy Vance with long hair to me. <laughs> you, can all, you can just about see it there, but he, he really he did look like TV on the radio. It was uh, <laughs> it was it was awesome. Brilliant. Look at those marshals in the background as well. That's uh, <laughs> just amazing, isn't it? Yeah, for those of you who don't know, that that that's the the headline. That's Ingui's setup is having all those martial heads and stacks. 
but it looks yes. brilliant for every band during the for day. Every band, yeah, it was superb. Got some good photos for their uh, websites and social media off that. Yeah, yeah. Really I mean, it looks brilliant. That photo, I think you took that photo, Gav. That looks yeah. absolutely fantastic, doesn't it? So, um, a wasted talent, certainly in photography, Gav. <laughs> So he's doing the photography level, level along with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see Paul on drums now. I'm not sure if that was Paddy up, Paddy Whack when uh, when that photo was taken, but uh, might well uh, have been. So after the set, um, we carried on watching a, a band, and then we met up with the uh, with the band afterwards. Um, we did what an interview, photo. which we're going to show you in a few minutes. I, I'm not going to lie; I don't. I, I don't I'm sure I've seen Jamo ever looking so happy <laughs> when he was in that photo. <laughs> We had a we had a really good laugh. Didn't we? we had a really good. We had a good laugh. We had a good catch up. We had a good chat. It was great when you when you sing a band, and you actually sing a rock out, and then you're having a chat as well afterwards. And it was it, it was really cool. To, to we gave them half an hour to, to cool down, and then we uh, yeah it very really kindly invited know. for an interview. So yeah, yeah which it was is. great to know what they're thinking before they went on stage. You know, and you're having a chat. You know, what you're looking forward to, what songs should we look out for, and that sort of thing. To then, as you're going to see, have a chat after and find out what they thought of what was going on. It was quite incitive. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's great. Which Everyone looks happy. Get to hear. And, and you'll notice that Paul the drummer Gray isn't there because he was still at the bar. So, <laughs> as Gary said, it's like herding cats trying to get them all together. But look, this was quite a rare moment. So, we're, we're, what we're going to do now, we're going to show you the interview, which was um, after the set at Great Yarmouth. Really hope you enjoy that. Okay, welcome Brilliant. back to Tales from the Power Age. Hope you're all well. Uh, we are here on tour tonight <laughs> with uh, Burnout Wreck. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, good. Good. And we've just witnessed a, a great show, Hard Rock Hell in Great Yarmouth, uh, which was brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Um, we had 11 or 12 songs, I think, all together. 11. 11. Got cut off a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's fine. Lost, lost one song. That was last one song. So what was the, what was the last song going to be originally? It was going to be Rock Ain't Dead. And did you make wow. a choice between the song that you did and Rock Out Dead? You just went with it. No, so it's, it's, it's going to be the last song. Next one on the list. Yeah. Guitars Electrified was the last song, and Guitars Electrified is good. Yeah, it's a good Yeah, yeah. we thought it was yeah, probably, yeah, song, yeah, it's really good. Upbeat, you know, have it. So we love it. You know, yeah. So. Yeah, we, we were saying that a minute ago, for what it's worth, I think actually what a brilliant end to the, to the set with the Guitars Electrified, which yeah, was absolutely brilliant. fantastic. Yeah. So um, in terms of uh, Great Yarmouth, have you been playing here before? No. I haven't, no. Never been. But you've never done been. Hard Rock Hills before, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've done uh, yeah, the two, Welsh one. Two, three Hard Rock Hills. Oh, really? I, think. Uh, right. so, I was yeah. very excited to come, because uh, I've never been to this part of the, the world before. And, uh, right. Never saw anything. It was dark from the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So leaving, so I got the impression it was quite flat. <laughs> no, for it is quite. Yeah, flat. yeah. yeah. Well, well renowned. I, actually, funny enough, um, I uh, we we were talking about a poster, a famous poster from ACDC back in '78, which was them head, well, not, yeah headlining. I think it was a student union gig at the Vauxhall. So were you aware that Bon Scott and ACDC had played, played the Vauxhall the same place. in 1978? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It came up on an auction and I sent it to Dill and said, check this out, there's a poster of ACDC at Great yeah. Yarmouth. And it's like, oh, yeah, I knew they played there, but... And it went for crazy money, didn't it? Well, just yeah. two to two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some bastard's bidding against me. It no. went for about he, two he and a half grand. I, did, I put a decent bid in, nowhere near what it went for. Um, I need to be but, careful because at this point we're going to watch these. <laughs> 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 well, you didn't win, mate, so it's, not, it's, not, it's all right. Yeah, so pretty cool. How does that feel then to be on the same stage as oh, ACDC as many years ago? It's pretty cool, right? There we go. Pretty, pretty cool, eh? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Which tour was it? Power Age. 78. I, do you know, I think yeah. they've played here. There's, there's a couple of, uh, there's a bit of footage of um, Bon Scott talking about um, Great Yarn. Yeah, there is a bit of video, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. and he's, uh, he's going, what a great place is. If you've ever been there, you should go. And I think it was after <laughs> he played the Hippodrome in uh, in London, I think. But it was definitely Power Rage. If they played more than Winter Gardens on that tour, then that's when I saw them. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, yeah. Well, it was either that. Yeah, it was around then. Do you, do you remember that? Yeah, I was right up front. Under Brilliant. Us. Oh, wow. oh awesome. Wow. wow. Fantastic. What makes me think, though, when you look at the stage, and the stage isn't massive tonight, I'm not sure it's really different to what it was in '78, but mm. you know, how do you, how do you cope in a, in a stage that, and that's probably a bigger stage than sometimes you guys play on, but 
how do you cope to move around on a stage that is quite limiting? How do you find it? Well, it's fine because I can't move around anyway. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can call them with the Ray-Bans on. Oh, 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 yeah. The sunglasses are there to distract people from my lack of movement. So I had, I'd, I've tried moving around, they just look ridiculous, so I just stick in the one place, really. And no, I look cool. We think you look cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, we do. We <laughs> did think there's a bit of fandom there, right? There, yeah, so right. Cool and you guys all wear black with some little sparkly elements going right. on as well, you know, it's just not unnoticed. The colour of rock. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and were you pleased with the reception from the crowd? That was oh, amazing, right. wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was, really, really, it was yeah. really full at the end, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I looked back, I was like, bloody hell, this, yeah, is, well, this is cool. Uh, you know, when we went on, yeah, there was a good, say, three or four rows. And then as we got into, like, I think it was about the fifth song, the, the, the other stage must have emptied and people started coming in and then I just thought they're not going away this is getting yeah. good isn't it yeah. what's going on here that's like, the testament isn't it yeah. like to the bar or the merch and or then, whatever and then they, they came to you. there was people yeah. singing I got them clapping and I thought this is this is good I'm going to turn out like a really good show yeah it felt like a really you good know, vibe as well yeah, so many people nice. around us were foot tapping and banging yeah, heads yeah, it, it, was, really it was full right up to the back yeah it was but yeah. by the end of it and it was just like so one, of, one of the things we were talking about, the contrasting guitars. Yeah, and, two and styles are very different yeah. between two guys. Is that a deliberate recruitment thing or is that just that's how it happened? No, I mean, you know, we we um, ended up as a a three-piece, you know, during lockdown, didn't we? Mm. And uh, we said, hey, we better get a new guitar player and we found Richard and, um, and it, it, we found Richard just before lockdown, actually, and then yeah. obviously yeah and so we never got to play and then a couple of years well a year and a half later i all found andy here and uh the rest is history you know and the, the two of them as you say are just they're totally that different. works really well and, and that's what the band needed to yeah to give it a wee step up, long history know? of twin guitars having yeah, two different yeah. styles but yeah. still coming together and, yeah. and it's just great yeah. having two lead guitar players so you give me a free lesson as well so. <laughs> <laughs> First one free, so. <laughs> well, they sounded great. The guitar sounded brilliant, actually. And yeah. Loud, loud. It was loud. It was loud. Yeah. But the sound overall. Was, the yeah. sound was great. You could hear everything coming through. Yeah. From where we were That's in the middle, we did both really well. But <laughs> if you went left and right, you got the separation thing going on. From where we were standing, actually, it sounded brilliant. It did sound really good. It sounded yeah. really, really good. good. And when you came on with your guitar, Gary, you could actually hear it and really know. It's yeah. really good. I, I was going to mention that, actually. You had a nice vintage to cut guitar tonight. Yes. So that looked brilliant. Yeah, well, it did look know, nice. Been, um, just got it um, from vintage. So I, mean, I got endorsed by them and they gave me the guitar for my years of songwriting, strumming, and said, there we go. See what you think of that. So I got one with P90s on it because I've not got one. I've only got humbuckers and all my guitars. And I thought, well, I'll get that. You know, like we were saying before, we were talking about right and left yeah. guitars, you know, and uh, so it'll be interesting to see what that sounds like up against a handbook and so I look forward to it, you know. But yeah, I just thought, well, yeah, I'd bring it up and get it out on stage tonight and, uh, you know, get a feel for it, like, you know, and that, that was good. Uh, we've not actually done that as this lineup had, yeah. had me playing guitar as well, so. It's just something different, isn't it? Really it's a bit of great. We've, look, we've taken a few videos, so um, I think we videoed four or five of the songs tonight, which will be uploading to Dill's Rock channel. So look out for that. We'll tag that into this as well, so you yeah. can upload and uh, you can... We'll send from our that. channel over to the, yeah. the live music uh, channel. Yeah, and it's it's really, really great. Really so I, you know, I hopefully you enjoyed seeing that as well. We've uploaded Paddy Whack as well, so hopefully hey. that will be on tomorrow. So <laughs> yeah. you'll be able to enjoy that. So um, sure. that Always enjoy really Paddy Whack. Now, one question I've got, the Marshall stack behind you, <laughs> what was all that about? That's Mom's Ingwies. Ingwies, no. right, so he's playing to the, he's headlining tonight. Yeah, right? he's headlining tonight. We, we were in earlier on when he was doing his sound shake, and it was just a complete wall, isn't it? 20 amps, right. 40 exactly. speakers. But loads of heads as well. Uh, uh, yeah, loads of stacks in them. What's that all about? I've seen any of them. I do Just plugs one in the middle. Well, no, on this interview well, I said, well, I saw well, recently right. he said they're plugged in. Nice. Right? Cool. Yeah. So we really, look, we've really loved it tonight. We've loved to be. With, it's been great being in your company this evening oh, as well. Earlier, yes, you're a really great bunch of guys. 
anyway, Gary, thanks so much, guys. Thank You've you. Been yeah, brilliant as always. always. We you. loved it today. Um, check out Dill's Rock channel. Uh, we'll be uploading three or four uh, tunes from this afternoon, which I know you're going to love and enjoy. So um, please um, comment, like, subscribe, get involved. It helps the algorithms, etc., etc. And we'll see you all soon. So see you later, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. 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 Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that interview. Um, uh, Gary had said to us, actually, it was quite a rare moment, I, which I've mentioned beforehand, actually getting everyone together. Um, but it was good good to hear about the gig straight afterwards, good to hear about um, what they're doing. Look out for Burnout Rec next year. They've got some dates coming up, potentially got some European dates as well. Three fantastic albums, um, you, which you can download on Spotify or Apple, but equally you can buy on um you can buy on Amazon as well. And yeah, as Jam's showing, look, Jam's got merch. And uh, Gappy's got a proper limited edition. Do you want to give us a 12 on that one, Gaps? No, it's, 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 it's not too much of a 12. Your hair in the way. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's just review a couple of the other bands that we saw on the day. So if we can go to the first one, and these were, these were great, by the way. They so were, Jam loves new music, and he was absolutely blown away, as we all were. So, Jam, do you want to, can I come to you first? Yeah, of course. Um, I had to deal with the I had to deal with the fact that the Karma Effect, who were due to play, unfortunately had to pull out late last minute. But I was still pleased because I knew the Hot One Two were playing, and I'd heard a lot about the Hot One Two from a lot of the guys uh, that I'd seen in the summer at the at the Love Rocks Festival, and a lot of people at Nods, Nods Fest. Gappy and I go to this festival in Southampton, and a lot of guys have mentioned the Hot One Two, so I'd, I checked them out early doors, and I was I was expecting big things, which is good because I said to these guys, "You've got to get in for the Hot One Two. They were due, they were the, they were the opening band on the Saturday, uh, but technical issues meant they they played us sort of about two o'clock, a couple of hours late. Um, and then we could see them though, didn't it? Because we were going to well, miss them otherwise, weren't we? Exactly. <laughs> if we, we haven't been for those happy. technical issues, we were buggered. We were very happy, but these five these five lads they're from Cambridgeshire, so fairly local. Um, when they come on stage. It was packed. It was the second stage. It was only the small stage, but it was packed, wasn't it? And we're like, oh, yeah. there's a proper buzz going on. Um, and when they came out, oh, I was pleased for that anyway. They came out and they just launched straight into it. Um, and you can see a copy of the set list there. Um, and they were, so, they were so with it. Their personalities shone through. And if there's only the best thing about seeing any new band is when they're totally up for it and that every single one of them are wanting to get every single person yeah. watching they were all over the shop, weren't they? Jump, you jumping definitely. around and yeah, and if you're doing places, that, it was, it and was fantastic. Got, and you've got a lead singer that actually is really oh, he good. Is, he was and brilliant. Wasn't he? It, it just pulled it all together. I mean, we were we were just we were we were we were, yeah, we very were all blown away with them. So, um, from yeah. apps, any any thoughts from you? I know you've given a couple already, but anything. Yeah, as I said, I just I was just I was just so so pleased to see this. It had so much energy. Uh, they were just all over the place. They, you know, they really rocked the rocked the building to the core. It was it was brilliant, and you could tell in the crowd that they, everyone was getting into them because just of the energy they were seeing on stage. Mm. And uh, as I said, the singer was just so good, so good. I can't stress how good in good he was, to be honest. So uh, they've just got a new album out, which I think uh, Gav's got already. And uh, I I would say to anyone to uh, to go and give it a listen. It's uh, it's immense. You yeah, check it, check it out on Spotify. It's uh, it's all there. It's just released last week, was it? Week before? It was. It was well, I've got to mention the B Vox, which I've just forgotten. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was vocals were so so good. Yeah. Sorry, Gab. <laughs> they were they were brilliant, weren't they? <laughs> they were really really good. When they're doing it with the big cheesy grins on their faces because they're having a whale of a time, it just uh, yeah. it's so infectious for the crowd as well. And um, yeah, and they've got some real party anthems, some real belters some old-fashioned you know uh, with a modern twist some classic yeah. songs and, uh, and i know they've got some serious management and some serious support behind them so you know check them out now and hopefully they're going to go far when we did chat with them afterwards they were so excited because they'd had a couple of eps like most new bands do but there there we go <laughs> um, <laughs> we stopped them getting so excited, bless them when we were chatting to them, they were so excited their new album called superbia they were, they were so looking forward to it because it was literally coming out the week after so they were so chuffed. We were gutted because we couldn't buy it while we were there. Uh, but it was it was it was really good. They were really happy to be there, which you could see there as well. Yeah, they were really chuffed to be there, and they were That's chuffed. That we liked even them. even quite happy to speak to us as well, which is unbelievable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so definitely ones to look out for. Yes, they're from Cambridge. Um, they spent a couple of days with Chris Barris as well, which they were telling us about, which was again yeah, really, yeah. really reaffirming for us because we're all big Chris Barris fans. So. 
great to see the uh, the guidance and mentoring that he's been doing with them as well. They're great. If you get an opportunity to go and see them, I'd really, uh, really encourage you to do that. These guys, uh, you're going to hear a lot more from these guys over, over the course of the next few months and next year. So yep. that's the hot one too. Well done, guys. So uh, let's go on to the what, the next band that we're going to talk about. So, Jam, I'm going to come to you first. This is uh, this is Quiver. And these guys we probably hadn't expected to go and see, but what were, yep. you, what were your thoughts on this one? They were nuts, right? <laughs> we heard we heard them tuning up. We heard them tuning up and it's like, and we saw them and thought, Hello. There wasn't a denim jacket, a metal tour t-shirt, a studded wristband in sight. So they were all the, the wrong side of 25. As, uh, I mean, the right, whatever you want to call it. They were young. They had a great look. And I thought, this could be interesting. And they were superb. They came out on stage straight away. They made it their own. Great personality, again, shining through. Lead vocalist, fantastic. Um, and they had a touch of the, what do you say, a modern band? A great young vibe. They had a touch of the DCs at the ACDC about them, didn't they? Yeah, and that all of that. Cool. Mm. We're looking again. God, they were different. They were sounded Gibson's really Three Marshals, and they were absolutely brilliant. Any reflections on that set? Well, again, that's, this that's is the same. When, they, when they were tuning up, they, they did a little bit of gone shooting and uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> rock and roll damnation. We thought, okay, here we go. This is going to be really good. And because of the, the way they were playing and what they were playing through, it sounded so much like ACDC. It was, it was just immense. Because yeah. when they first came out with all this these clobber, this clobber on, we think, oh, dear, what on earth are we going to see here? And that they, they <laughs> really, I was, honestly, I was going to walk out. I thought, no, this can't be. The, and they were so, so good. And they had a look, simple taste. If you, look, if you look down the bottom, and they do riff raff. Uh, the lead guitarist you can see in the background there, he actually goes out into the stage and does all the anger stuff. <laughs> it was so brilliant. I don't he ended know up on the got, bar, didn't he? Did he go on the bar? Did he actually sit yeah. on the bar or stand yeah. on the bar or something? <laughs> it was, yeah. it was, they did a they brilliant version. That is not an easy oh, song yeah. to do. No, it yeah. isn't. It was That's a fantastic not an easy song. version of that. They song. nailed it. Yeah. Brilliant. So, so uh, have any, any, um, any other comments on Quiver? They, they do. They are the they are a result of this this pandemic shit that caught us all out these boys um, they met on the inter on that internet um yeah, they played all five together. of them from a different country yeah five different countries five different lads met each other made use of their time they formed a fantastic band and they were so chuffed and that was the thing with them we were we were chatting to them and said oh, it's, you know it's so great to see them and they said we're just so happy to be out and being able to play live and I've, I've since, I've caught a couple of their things on YouTube and they played to some massive audiences over the summer, so loads of different festivals across Europe. Um, I think we're going to see quite a bit of them. Really, really mm -hmm. good. Really good band. And again, like we said, do catch them. You might, when you, you see them in the, God, the shirts and the white and the clobber, as Gap said, don't let that put you off because they're remarkable young men, really. And they had, they had the foresight to have this massive QR code at the side of the yeah. stage that you could scan on your phone. Obviously, being youngsters, that's what uh, that's what everyone's doing these days. So, yeah. that was really, really clever. Brilliant. Have anything else to add? Yeah, we've got a QR code at the end of the of the, <laughs> <Yeah. that's right. laughs> uh, the end of this nice, post. Nice feel free to, uh, yeah, feel free to scan that and look at our socials. Um, no, I, I think they're good, and I, I actually quite like the the look. I think you know we we need to get youth into it. A lot of the bands we follow that you know. I could be a new, they're not really new, you know, the massive wagons and stuff like that. The, the audiences tend to be quite old. So if, if, yeah. if the, the thing that changes it and breaks that back is that you change how you look and get yeah. some young kids into it and young girls, even for this lot, mm. bring it on. You know, we've got to get the, keep the, the rock alive. And uh, these guys are going to do that, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So, and, uh, yeah just to reinforce the, the cover of Riff Raff was brilliant. Absolutely it was. fantastic. Um, and, and they were great guys, absolutely super guys. So if you get an opportunity, please go and see them. They were fantastic. So um, that brings us on to Midnight Devils, all the way from Chicago, Illinois. So um, Gav, I know we 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 stood and watched a, a bit of a good part of the bit of this set. Yeah. Any any thoughts or comments? Yeah, it was just classic. Um, I guess evoking Twisted Sister and Kiss. You know the 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 singer bass player it's kind of half d snyder half blackie lawless half paul stanley a little bit gene simmons lobbed in you know which means you're going to be entertained isn't it three halves and, uh, brilliant and, and yeah. to see to see a uh, sniper who we ended up meeting later on doing an amazing job on the guitar you know 
clearly a, an Eddie Van Halen fan, and as his T-shirt will attest, that we'll show you later. Um, great stuff, you know. Quite a few covers in the set, which always go down well, you know. And if you can pull off Panama, then you're a friend of mine. You know, it's, <laughs> it's and they went down, it went down really well with the crowd. The crowd loved them. I think they played Hard Rock Hell before, or certainly Great Yarmouth before. So this wasn't the first time. They went on to continue the UK tour with Pretty Boy Floyd. Um, a friend of ours, Tom, if you're watching Tom, I'm sure you are. Um, he, he said pretty similar to you, actually, Gav, that he felt that the lead singer was very Gene Simmons, uh, D. Snyder-esque. Um, really enjoyed it. Felt, and I think if you want energy, then um, this band gives you that in uh, in buckets. Um, any other comments, Jam, around? Uh, well, as song? you were saying, the lead singer, he put himself out there in the crowd. So he liked getting up, up close and personal, so to speak. And... Um, I've joined Sniper's Facebook and, and less he, he posts a, an Eddie Van Halen picture every day on Facebook. Yeah, I've seen that as well, yeah. And I'll be honest, it's become part of my ritual now. I check out, I'll see Eddie for the night. And it's, I love Eddie Van Halen, as clearly Sniper does. Brilliant. I just love it. It's a different picture every day. And he'll put a comment on what guitar he's playing. And it just, it makes me feel good to see a picture he's, of Eddie. He so. starts every post with day, whatever it is, since Eddie yeah. Van Halen passed, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's it. 1150, yeah, whatever, yeah. And yes, it's thanks for that, mate. I really enjoy that, and it makes me, it, it puts me at one with the world when I start a day. So, yeah, love it. <laughs> I think he'd seen Van Halen something like 37 times from <laughs> the conversation we had. He absolutely loves them. And what you can't see on his leather jacket as well is a Kiss Army t uh, little patch as well, just uh, under his finger there. So, big lover of Kiss and Van Halen. So, he, for that alone, he's friends of ours for, for that <laughs> endorsement for those two. He's a top man. He was quite happy to chat to us for hours wasn't he and, yeah you know, he was an absolute... I think he ended up talking to us for about an hour and a half didn't he yeah, yeah, he's he's so it's amazing yeah, absolutely yeah, lovely band. guy and great you know good band so look check them out definitely worth a definitely worth a look they came all the way from Chicago to little old great Yarmouth to play hard rock hell so uh, well done guys and uh, we're looking forward to seeing and meeting you again so uh that's midnight devils which takes us on we did some of us did see a little bit of Pretty Boy Floyd, but not enough really, I think, to to give it mention. So it would be unfair to sort of give a review of that. And then we got the headline in Act, which was Ingui. So, uh, Gav, what were your what were your reflections on uh, Ingui? Well, I've had a on off relationship with his career. Um, on when it's song based and singer based, and slightly off when it goes a bit too virtuoso. Um, that's just my taste. It's no reflection of his talent, obviously. So um, the fact that the singing is kind of taken a back seat, um, you know, there's no Joe Lynn Turner or any, you know, major uh, poppy songs going on. Um, doing Bohemian Rhapsody was ballsy, to say the least. Let's just leave it there. Um, no, not not really for me. Okay, cool, Jam. Um I, I refer to my earlier point when I was talking about Burnt Out Wreck. By midway through the Burnt Out Wreck, it was packed. By the end, it was even fuller. It wasn't like that for Ingvi. It was perhaps the opposite. It was pretty but much the opposite, yeah, very, unfortunately. Good, good point. He's clearly a very gifted guy and is fantastic at playing the guitar. Um, but, yeah, it's not, my it's not utterly my bag, unfortunately. But a lot of people there, I think, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, Gappy. Yeah, my brother got me into him when he was a young, aspiring guitar player. He was his favourite guitar player for a long time, and uh, I really didn't like the uh, the shredding style back in the eighties uh, until until I heard Ingbe and uh, a lot of his songs, which were really good. Rising Force is a great track. Far Beyond the Sun, brilliant. Um, but there's a lot on there which uh, which really didn't float my boat in the slightest. Um, there was far too much reverb, far too much digital delay, and you couldn't really hear what he was doing. The drummer was great, the keyboard player was good, the bass player was excellent, but uh, Ingwe, he didn't really pull it off, and if, if only he'd had a singer, I know he's got a strange relationship with singers these days, but, uh, well, his vocal you couldn't actually hear at all, it was as if, you know, you might as well not have had the microphone on, um, so that uh, didn't go down too well in, for me, um, mm. and it, it was just too long. It's certainly an interesting choice with, with with no lead vote without a lead vocal you know without an actual lead vocalist you'll yeah. see perhaps you'll find that actually it goes full circle perhaps he'll reintroduce a lead singer and, he, and it'll be more like a, a a band show rather than a we'll see we'll see 
It was an experience. It was definitely an experience. It was definitely an experience, yeah. He, he does things on his terms, and if, while he's headlining, he doesn't need to change his terms, does he? No, that's, yeah, no, that's, that's true. true. So, so, look, some good reflections. He's clearly really talented. I saw him in 1991 or somewhere around that time, a long time ago. Um, I think when you get to an end of a day like that, you want some foot stomping rock and roll, right? Yeah, Especially on a classic rock weekend. So I think, yeah. I don't know, maybe it just wasn't the right venue or right gig for him. Because I think if you'd gone with the intention and had a bottle of wine to sit down and appreciate what he was doing, then you might have a different um, mindset. But if you've had 10 pints and a couple of Jack Daniels, you probably want something a little bit more down the line. Um, a bit like y &T in 2017. Yeah, 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 that's right. I mean, he's clearly yeah. really talented. So, um, yeah, just I just I think it was probably a square peg in a round hole. Mm. OK, well, look, that's um, that's Hard Rock Hell. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, as always, um, you can find us on Facebook and Tales from the Power Age. You can find us on Twitter at TTFTPR online at www.talesfromthepowerage.com. If you want some merch, look out on redbubble.com merchandise. Um, we'll see you soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Cheers, guys. See you later. Cheers.